Check us out at Grand Rapids Comic Con November 11th to the 13th. Hope to see you there. that's tied into the movie we're reviewing today? I guess not. Oh, well, good luck with that. Thanks. Oh, hey, Jim, what you up to? Oh, just not existing until one of these videos started. Keep it up. Sure. Huh, maybe it's just gonna be a normal day. Maybe it's just gonna be a normal day. Maybe it is just gonna be a normal day. Oh, gee, I wonder what this is. Let me go check with the group. Okay, what are we doing? I feel so strange. Like something's invading my brain. What the hell is that? What, what, what was it? Oh, nothing. Uh, Critic, can I speak to you over here for a second? What, 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 what? Critic, we can't tell anyone what we just saw. What? Why? It might upset them. It should upset them. There's something in the studio. What's that? Sound like a, a roar or something. Yeah, that's what you want us to hear. What? How do we know that's not what you want us to think it sounded like? I'm sorry, but has anyone found Jesus yet? Okay, hell with this. I'm checking out the kitchen. Let me know if you find Jesus there. Is that really the best effect we have? I don't know, but keep it under wraps. No! Malcolm, Tamara, come over here! It's a monster tail or something! Oh, you'd like for us to believe that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's probably Jesus' tail. No, it's not Jesus' tail! Just take a look! Why would we follow you? Because it's literally one step! Oh, your YouTuber mind would have us believe that. What does that have to do with taking one step? Jesus only took one step. Don't think that's right here. Let me just bring the tail to you. No, Craig, don't do it. Why? It's right there! It'd be just too much. What is going on here? What is up with everybody? Oh, wait, I know what this is. Everybody's a cutout, no one's making any sense, there's no trust anywhere. We're being invaded by... the commentary. What's that supposed to mean? None of you are gonna make any sense because the commentary has taken you over. You're not gonna make any logical steps because you're just pawns for somebody to hammer their message in with. Oh, you mean like you YouTubers seem to? Yes, but when we do it, it's intentionally funny. Jesus was intentionally funny. Name one joke Jesus told. You. <sighs> Look, there's nothing over there. No, I there really there's something over there. Jesus, I'm gonna take this. There's something. I here. bet it's him. Oh, I guess it's also Stephen King time. <laughs> I've been cutting King a lot of slack recently, talking about good works, and even works that technically weren't his, and honestly could have used his help. But you know what I miss? Shitting on King properties everyone seems to love. The miss sounds good! Released in 2007 and written and directed by King favorite Frank Darabont, The Mist was a pretty big box office disappointment and at the time, the few people I knew who saw it really didn't like it. Based on Stephen King's novella, I guess I stayed away from this film based on all the bad press it got over the years, but its fan base has been growing and more and more people are saying it's actually pretty good. So I finally watched it for Nostalgia Ween and yeah, I think you were right the first time, this film kinda sucks. 
Okay, admittedly, I've seen far worse horror films, but this is a case of a story clearly taking a lot from other stories and not doing them any better. It wants to prove the same point as Lord of the Flies, The Treasure of Sierra Madre, and several Twilight Zones, with creature ideas from The Fog, Alien, and several bug films, but it doesn't know how to do any of them nearly as good. Like I said, I know this film has gotten a following, and good for it, I guess. I'm sure a lot of people worked hard on it to leave an impact. But for me, it teeter-totters between tonally inconsistent, unintentionally hilarious, yet somehow aggressively dull. And yes, I realize that would make for a very odd teeter-totter, but you get my drift. I'm not saying you have to dislike it like me, I just want to explain why there are some people out there that just don't think it worked. I have one thing to say to you, critic. Is it Jesus? Jesus! And yeah, why the in-your-face commentary might play a part in that too. Let's take a look at The Mist. The credits roll, and oh, you think you're gonna win me over with the main character being Drew Struzan? Well, you came pretty close. Drew Struzan is arguably the best movie poster artist who ever lived, and it's pretty cool the main character, David, played by Thomas Jane, is shown painting his works. The only downside for such an interesting job, it plays into nothing. I thought maybe he was gonna draw pictures for his kid to help him get through all this, or paintings of the people who died, I don't know, something. It's referenced once in a really forced conflict, but we'll get to that in a minute. It's just a random talent that never comes back. It's like the Ninja Turtles learning martial arts and then they just shoot people. Why introduce interesting things if you're not gonna do anything interesting with them? It looks great. A little full, a lot of sap. A massive storm destroys the outside and inside of David's home. Who lives quietly in Christ King? There's a whole world out there! Ah. To be fair, that's what Hollywood does with the last Truzon's work. What are so bad? Holy crap! Billy. All right, Ma, but you just got it. Come, come on. Whoa! Well, you just met the most interesting person in the movie. I'm not even kidding. Almost all character development in this essential amount of time before the monster arrives can be summed up in one word. Chores. Get some plastic sheeting and duct tape and seal this up. Just think we should trade insurance and I'll find my insurance guy's number, I'll bring it by get later. Dress. I'll take him to town. You guys get the goodies, I'll wait and I'm gonna try Steph and I'll pay for him. I gotta go check the pharmacy. Why don't you get your stuff? I'll meet you at the checkout. Three men meet me back at the Jeep in five Steph minutes. Steph and I want a date night. Babysit. This is your pressure gauge. No safety valve. You rate it for 160 every night. And yeah, I know it's not who you are underneath, it's what you do that defines you, but if Batman spent a whole movie just fixing his car and cleaning up bat shit, you wouldn't find him interesting either. Daddy, look. There are a few scenes building up the danger that's coming, but plot exposition's a chore too. Missile defense research, you know, I'm sure you've heard the stories. The Arrowhead Project? They have a crashed flying saucer up there with frozen alien bodies. Right. That's absurd, unless it's Tommy Knockers. Then it's really absurd. Eh, maybe the film's just trying to be really subtle with this character setup. Like, take a guess who the villain is. With lines like these, I don't know how good it is, but I guess we'll have to make do. That's right, Dr. Zola, you Hydra bastard! Hey, David. Thanks for helping me out today. The actors are all fine, and sometimes there's a hint of a character moment. Are you and Mr. Norton gonna be friends now, Daddy? Guess we're not mad at each other anymore. But not enough for them to be memorable or root for them when the trouble starts. Which, by the way, is not even 12 minutes into the film. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I know everybody by this point. Let's introduce the threat. Shut the doors! Shut the doors, my cat! Hey, hey, nobody take my spot. I have ice cream, it's gonna melt. God is finally using his can of raid on the earth. Funny enough, only the insects survive. It's death. No, William Sadler scenes come later. Everybody's trapped inside as the place shakes and the people outdoors scream in pain. I, I can't just stay here. I have to get home to my kids. That might not be the best, Carol. When Darabont teams you up with kids, it doesn't end well. So here's one of the problems. There's very little music in this, which isn't bad. Several films utilize that great. But when your characters aren't set up and you're just thrown into the danger 11 minutes in, every dramatic scene looks like the nominees for Best Supporting Actress are Melissa McBride, The Mist. Oh, I can't stay here. Wanda's looking after little Victor. She's only eight. I told them I'd only be gone a few minutes. Yeah, I don't know anything about this woman. I'm already expected to applaud at her Oscar moment. Now, it looks like we won't learn anything about her either as she walks into the mist and never returns. The only other two characters I kind of like in this outside of the kid is Francis Sternhagen as Irene and Jeffrey Dumont as Dan. Not because they're written especially well, but because they work within the clunky character exposition and surprisingly make it sound natural. 
All she does here is say who everybody is and what they do, like their dads and kindergarten cop. But I'll be damned if she doesn't make it sound natural and memorable. Amanda Dumtree teaches third grade. She's wonderful, the kids love her. David's an artist, he does movie posters and such. Even with her acting, I can't pretend I'm not distracted by the background saying, Randall Weems makes cake? No, oh, we got two seconds, Big Bill. Come on, get your blanket. Mrs. Rupler's here. The hell's with the shaky zooming cam all of a sudden? Oh, I guess this is trying to look more realistic and gritty like a found footage movie. Only 20 minutes in! Yeah, almost all of this is shot cinematically. A lot of them compose very nicely, honestly, but half the shots go Blair Witch Handycam from here on out. Let me look at you. Hmm? Aw, you're so cute I could just shoot you. David goes looking for blankets in the back and... Oh, the prophecy of home improvement warned the... He sees something violently tries to break open the back door and decides to tell the others. Oh, not that something gigantic was trying to get in, but rather he heard a sound. Nobody else heard that sound? Well, like whatever made, made that noise I heard. But look, I heard it, okay? I'm not convinced that you heard anything. Heard noise. I mean, we're not hearing anything now, right? Anybody? Okay, so here's an example of it's obvious what they're trying to do. They're just not doing it well. They want to create distrust among these people so we can see it build over time. I get that, but they're sacrificing any logic a rational person would have for it. Just say there's something that shook the door and tried to get in, but no, he keeps saying he just heard something. I know, you're a, you're a big shot artist with connections in New York and Hollywood and all like that, but that don't make you better than anybody else. Where'd all that come from? Didn't these guys just meet? Like, he was clarifying their names a second ago. Jim, right? Mm -hmm. Myron? But suddenly this guy acts like he has a random long-running beef. You're a big shot artist with connections in New York. I know you big shot artists claim to hear things better than us. Is that right? What? Nor do I like being talked down to or called stupid by a guy who went to college just because he's got the jitters. Oh, maybe that's why they worked in him being an artist. Could have literally had any big shot job there, but... Make him an artist, there's so many visually pleasing ways this visual medium is not gonna take advantage of that. Ready, kid? Let's rock. A kid decides to go outside and fix something, but a monster attacks. <laughs> so, um... People were afraid of this, huh? Ivan Ooze's CG dicks got people shaking in their sheets, huh? I mean, aside from Ivan himself. Would puppet tentacles that were actually there really cost that much more? They don't all have to look like this, guys. Please, I don't want to be a Monsters Unleashed. So just because you're a big shot artist doesn't mean you heard it. Oh, shut up! Don't say anything to anybody. Why not? You know what the threat is, wouldn't that be helpful? There's military guys there for shit's sake. It'd be good if they knew. Well, you got a piece of it there. Just go ahead and show him. In fact, I'm gonna edit this scene to show how it should have gone down. Come back to the loading dock, okay? I'll show you. Boom! Just a few seconds. But that won't contribute to the commentary of distrust, so we waste an entire eight minutes just talking about showing this damn thing to them. Should we show him? No, nobody's gonna ask where one of the staff members went. Okay, let's bring him a piece. No, you have to come back to the storage room to see it. I don't wanna go back to the storage room. That's like a 30 second walk. I swear to God, there's eight minutes of this. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm just not that stupid. I'll show you. No. What reason could we possibly have? Oh, please. Look, I'm gonna be taking down names, starting with you. This is payback for the lawsuit that I filed against him. Go look, pile of shit. Do you want me to report to you? You wanna lose your job? Are you listening? Hello, can, hello, can anybody hear me? <laughs> But you see, neighbor turned against neighbor. My God, this could be us. If we were really anti-walking for some reason, this could be us. When they finally do go to the back room, they see the arm melt away and realize he's telling the truth. It appears we may have a problem of some magnitude here. Our screenwriter really blows. Let me preach your word. Let me shine your light. Marsha Gay Harden, The Mist. Some can be saved, can't they? Yes, some can be brought. Mm-hmm, guess what her role is? The crazy religious nut. 
Yep, main rednecks, monsters, alcoholics, religious extremists who double as bullies. You don't even need to play the Stephen King drinking game with this one. Just down a bottle of red rum and it'll even out. Well, if you need a friend, don't you condescend to me. I have a friend. God up above. Immaculate shit. The scarecrow isn't as much a straw man as this character. I am not even kidding when I say every time they cut to her, all she is doing is quoting religious extremism. And you guessed it, they cut to her a lot. From the glory of God, he is a stern and vengeful God. And bring the fiends of hell down on our heads. As Abraham prepared to sacrifice his only son. We are being punished. He points the finger. The fiends of hell, you see, they are let loose. Get off the stage. <laughs> Right? She's pretty much Mr. Freeze if you replace the ice puns with Bible quotes. She is the worst combination of annoying and boring. She never says anything interesting, and she says it in the most obnoxious way. Just put this graphic at the bottom of her and you'll have the complete package. Do you happen to have a gun in the store? Here? No. Please. What do you think this is, a school? My husband's idea. He's away on business a lot. Yeah, a grocery store in Constitutional Carry, Maine, and only one person has a gun. Got a shotgun in my truck. Red pickup, right? The shells are in the glove compartment. Now I believe we're in Maine again. The neighbor and a few others venture out into the mist, and the biker ties a rope around him to see how far they can get. Hey, crazy lady, I believe in God, too. I just don't think he's the bloodthirsty asshole you make him out to. That's King's way of saying, hey, I wrote the stand. That earned me like 10 more stories where I can focus on religious nuts. <laughs> we get what should have been a suspenseful scene if we weren't already shown Ursula's STD, so it's not exactly the scariest mystery of what's out there. On the plus side, if Billy wanted to make shit production of Onward, I can pull that off now. Now do you believe? Jesus, 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 Oh, Jesus. God. That works, too. Jesus, Man, Jesus, 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 don't you just hate her? Jesus, Jesus, yes. Jesus, yes, I do. Jesus, that means we understand Jesus, drama. Jesus, no, it doesn't. It just means Jesus, you made me hate someone that's annoyingly Jesus, easy to hate. Jesus, but doesn't she just get on your nerves? Jesus, yes! Well, Jesus, that's complexity. Jesus, complexity would be if I liked and hated her. Would you shut the Jesus, hell up? Jesus. Well, our work here is done. Our commentary is just too intense for him. Line? Jesus. Ah, right. Jesus, Jesus. Why is this entertaining? Do you find this entertaining? Why is this entertaining? <laughs> Doug returns to playing Kingdom Hearts in Birth by Sleep every Friday on Twitch. We also have new content six days a week. Hope to see you there. Just their breath after the attack, the movie is kind of to ask, who the hell are these two? I thought I'd come in and say hi. 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 <laughs> oh, it's one of the military guys, and the girl asked to babysit. They each got maybe two lines earlier. It's nice that 55 minutes in, they finally start a romance between them. How come you never asked me out? I'm stupid, I guess. Yeah, a little late to set them up, don't you think? What's even the point? Oh, this is to make us feel bad when she dies literally six minutes later. Yeah, that's brilliant. Remember when Psycho opened up with Janet Lee saying, I and then got stabbed immediately after? I was so shocked they did that after all the investment I had in her story. Speaking of keeping you invested, get a load of these effects. Um, aren't I supposed to hold up my phone to capture that? Oh, don't worry, they get better. Now we're in a Flintstones cartoon! <laughs> yeah, listen to that dramatic music. That's so much more powerful than the wah wah they play after he says, It's a living. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's people that are afraid of this. When I get more afraid of a Pee Wee episode with Terry, I'm sorry, something's not working. <laughs> God didn't do that, you did it. Oh, oh, don't do that. They're even funnier close up. They look like a Monsters University candle melted over a Rango toy. I mean, ooh, I'm so horrified by the terror I'm seeing right now. Can you make a plushie out of him? I totally snuggle up with that. 
Yeah, shake that camera. This is real life, goddammit. Embrace the adorable cuddliness that I think a Power Rangers movie fought once. Guys, this is really silly. <laughs> They fight the creatures back, and like I said, Babysitter Girl, yeah, why even learn her name at this point, is taken out. Did we get him? Did we get him all? What are you, yogurt clearing his throat? Did we get him all? Mukh, mukh. And our legs were still there. They discover one of the military men all messed up from being attacked by the monsters. Hey, hold it up, partner. Always got that gun, right? Right? Oh. Uh, no way. Just give me the gun. Again, they treat it like we're losing a crucial character, but I can't even remember if this guy was introduced or not. I'll give something like Langoliers this. The characters were cartoons, but they were memorable cartoons. I still recall their personalities and backstories all these years later. I am literally still watching this movie, and I can barely remember anyone. Want another reason to get the hell out of here? Mrs. Carmody. I'd like to leave before people start drinking the Kool-Aid. They do put together the religious nut is gonna start forming a resistance. In most stories about tribalism and survival, the characters always pick up on this way too late, so I like they do logically figure it out early. This, among many reasons, leads them to wind to venture to the drugstore across the street to see if they can find other people and supplies. Bring you back some comic books. I don't want them. I want GC here. Unless they have X-Men, you can die for X-Men. Make their way to the drugstore and find a whole bunch of people cocooned up. Not enough like Alien? Well, don't worry, they impregnate them too and their bodies burst open with spiders! I mean, ooh, this is so scary! I'm sorry, this is hilarious! Does that thing have human teeth? Like one of those shark memes? These poor actors are giving their all to fight effects they have no idea are gonna look like the Joker fish. <laughs> Again, I so see why they shot it like this, because God, it just feels so real. Like, I'm really there laughing at these effects. Oh yeah, I believe that's King's Pharmacy, because that's what he saw when he was on drugs half the time. Has the film mentioned yet this character's bad and wrong? I don't know, I think we we're too subtle with it, so we're just gonna repeat it 20 more times. The earth is scourged with whips and scorpions. We have seen the earth vomit forth from her lips. Why is she still talking? Want this to feel even more realistic, like, wow, you're really there? Let's over-explain parallel dimensions. We're in King's comfort zone, all right? I thought that there were other dimensions all around us. I wanted to try and make a window. We must have ripped a hole open by accident. This other world came spilling through to ours. You know, how did a series with a kid obsessing over waffles make this feel more legit? Seriously, this film would have been ten times scarier if we never saw what was in the mist and it was never explained. You just made it a story about surviving and tribalism. And before anyone else brings it up, yes, this does remind me a lot of extremists during the pandemic. But we saw how that happened. People got into their echo chambers, algorithms, the internet exploited lies for hits. Even cable news has heavy leans in order to give views. There's tragically, but obviously a logical progression. And that's not here. I don't know why these people do the cuckoo things they do, like not walking into a room, or carrying something into a room, or saying you saw something move, or not explaining the threat you're up against. These classic stories seem relevant because you could almost see yourself doing the same. If you made any of the dumb choices these people did, you deserve the Ice Age dinosaur eating you up. Punish for going against the will of God. Splitting his atoms or stem cells and abortions! Yeah, I didn't vote for Trump. Can we skip this now? The military dude is tossed out to the monster and our heroes, I guess we're rooting for simply because they're sane, try to leave without crazy ladies' permission. People who refuse to bend to the will of God, they mock our humility. Oh my God, I'm just fast forwarding to where she gets killed. I'm not even rewinding it, because I know that's what you want. Like, ooh, that felt so good. But no, there was no satisfaction in that. You want me to have the same reactions I had to the religious nuts in Midnight Mass and Edward Scissorhands. But you're not gonna get it, because one took a lot of time to give great insight and background into a character's cunningness. The other gave a brief but effective look at a side character's kookiness. Both served their story for what was needed and it felt so good to see them get their comeuppance. This character was written like a bad impression of someone the writer didn't like that went on forever. Blow. They try to outrun the Zelda spiders, and most of them get in the car. 
And you know this is the early 2000s when they give you one of the lamest cliches of the time. You guessed it, the one woman wailing soundtrack. Order today. I will admit I was surprised to find the wife didn't make it. She was only in the film's intro, so I really thought they were building up a reunion and was a little bummed when they found her dead. It is one of the few legit emotions I get out of this. I told her I'd fix it. I'm going to Broken up. Wake Billy up, he should see this. searching for an ending, and after the Cloverfield monster passes them over, they run out of gas. Well, I'm bored. Wanna kill each other? They come to the conclusion to axe each other off pretty fast. In fact, they don't even say anything. They just look at each other like, Yeah, I know King's endings always suck. I want out. Mm, are we there yet? Is that a no? But no more bullwits. Still plenty of annoying zooms though. The guy who made Shawshank everybody. And he gets out waiting for the creatures to eat him. Come on, come on! But it wasn't a monster they heard in the distance. It was actually. <laughs> Worst Monday ever. I actually love the look on his face. Like you're expecting something similar to the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. Too, how just everybody ignores him. They're supposed to find people and get them to safety, and here's a guy screaming outside a car with dead people, and they're like, Nah, he looks good. See if Bizarro Carol actually likes being a good mother in this universe. Now, I will admit, I did know the ending going into this, and I'm not gonna lie, that's one of the few things that made me want to see it. Because I love bummer endings in horror films. Evil Dead, Drag Me to Hell, Pet Cemetery, The Descent, even Night of the Living Dead, which they're also clearly taking a lot from. I just love how almost humorously bleak they are. There's just a relentless meanness to them that's swimming in comic irony. But here's the thing. This isn't done like it's ironic. It's done like it's important. <laughs> Yeah, the Wailing Singer is still going, there's a ton of slow-mo, there's a grand sweeping shot. This is how you end Platoon, not a movie where you fight off We're Back pterodactyls. Plus again, I just don't give a shit about these people. I barely remember anything about them except, a good chunk of the time, they did really stupid things. Which in a cheesy horror film, that's excusable. But in a commentary movie, it really isn't. Look, I know this film has a lot of fans, and I don't know, maybe if I didn't see all these other stories it took from, I would be a fan too, but I have seen them, and I can't help but constantly think back to how much better they achieve similar goals. Frank Darabont does know horror, and to his credit, I think what this movie was trying to be, he did eventually achieve with The Walking Dead. That show does have the gritty realism and tragedy that borrows from other sources, but utilizes them in a more provocative way, with memorable characters. With this, I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I'd much rather have someone like M. Night Shyamalan direct it. I know it sounds insane, but look, you have roughly a 50-50 chance it's gonna be good. Either way, I'm gonna remember the weirdos he writes and directs, and whether it be good or bad, it will leave an impression. I'd much rather have that than something that does a lot of the same, but thinks it's doing something revolutionary and groundbreaking. Like I said, I know a lot of people like it, and if you do, awesome. For my money, I don't need to search deep to find that this mist just ain't for me. What the hell? What happened? Well, the intensity was just too much for them, so I killed them all. Did they ask you to do that? No, but I just got that vibe, you know, from looking at him. Do you want to die? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. But that's weird. We never figured out what the monster was. Oh my god. It's Purple Source Rex. Purple. Quick, get a shaky cam so we can film the realism. Don't worry, Mr. McCritic, I'm on it. Ah, uh, yes, so shaky, so zoomy, everyone will swear they're in the same room as this terrifying abomination! 
I mean, I had worse flavors. So have I. <laughs> yeah, okay, Jim, can you, um... Yeah, sure. Okay, I think we're done here. All right. Hey, wait, why weren't you affected by the commentary? Oh, well, because I did commentary on the movie. But I thought it was supposed to be a pretentious commentary. Well, that's ridiculous. I've never been pretentious. At all. Still doing cameos for charity, and this month we're doing Wings for Life. Wings for Life is a not for profit spinal cord research foundation. Their mission is to find a cure for spinal cord injuries. They fund world class scientific research and clinical trials around the globe aimed at healing the injured spinal cord. With a 100% rating on Charity Navigator, this is definitely a wonderful one to check out. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever, go ahead and click on the link below and be giving to a wonderful organization. Or if you're like, screw you, I would never want a cameo from you, at least consider looking at this charity anyway, because they really do amazing work. So please consider either giving a cameo, donating, or spreading the word about what a wonderful foundation this is.